Good morning. Happy Easter from Miami Foursquare Church. I'm Pastor Calvin. And I'm Pastor Grace. Unfortunately, due to the pandemic, we can't currently meet in person. However, we are blessed to bring you a virtual Easter service. We continue to pray for the well-being, safety and well-being of your family and loved ones. Thank you for inviting us into your home. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We are pleased to introduce today our guest speaker, Pastor Dave Robinson. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to the Miami Foursquare Church. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the celebration of this wonderful day where we celebrate where you rose from the dead. And we thank you for that because it means life for us. And we now worship you and adore you. You are the focus of our Easter. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, if I was to give a theme to my sermon, I would say, what does Easter mean to you? I have a lot of thoughts and that I've shared with my kids about what Easter means to me. But I want to share it from the eyes of one woman, Mary Magdalene. A lot of things have been said about her that the Bible does not say are true. Let's read what the Bible says about her. In Luke chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village, preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. And certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod Stuart, and Susanna, and many others who provide for him from their substance. <clears throat> Jesus traveled from town to town, taking his disciples, <coughs> and along with him came some of the women. Notice, among those women that traveled with Jesus in his ministry was Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene had seven demons cast out of her. We do not know what those demons were. They could have been a fear. They could have been oppression. They could have been all kinds of things that harassed her. If you look at some of the things in the Bible that people who had demons, the response to them, some of them tried to commit suicide. Some of them were a terror to their neighborhood. Some of them were out in lonely places away from everybody. But God had delivered her. And now... It says she became a part of the ministry. She supported the ministry of Jesus as he traveled <coughs> from town to town. We also, the next time we say Mary, she's at the cross on John chapter 19, verse 25. We see her, she's there with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and John, the disciple. And as she watched that, can you imagine the tear? This woman who had had so much liberty and freedom brought to her, and the one that had brought it, now she sees him brutalized and murdered on a cross. Imagine the trauma that goes with this woman. Such trauma. And then in Mark chapter 16, we look at the story again, and the next time we see Mary Magdalene, is in Mark chapter 16. Jesus had been buried in the tomb near where he was crucified. There was a garden there. And it says, And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices that they might come and anoint him. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, <coughs> for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Let me take this story from here. 
they had gone to anoint the body of Jesus, which was one of the customs of that day on treating the body. They didn't know the stone had already been rolled away. Jesus had already risen from the dead. The keepers had already fled. The tomb was deserted, except for this messenger, this angel. And when they got there, they looked inside, and there was this angel. And this angel showed them the empty place. said, see, this is where Jesus was. He's risen. Go tell the disciples. But they were fearful, and they did not do it. It said they wouldn't say a word to anybody. They told no one of the empty tomb or the resurrection of Jesus. Next, we go to John chapter 20, and the story goes from there. John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Mary tells Peter that the body is missing. She really doesn't tell him that the, Jesus is risen, but the body is missing. Peter and John take off for the tomb, and Mary's there too at, in the uh, garden, and they see it empty. They go back. They believe that Jesus is risen from the dead. Mary does not. She again looks into the tomb, and this time there are two angels in the tomb. And they tell her he's not here. She is crying and weeping. She turns, and as she turns, she runs right into Jesus Christ himself. She runs right into him and doesn't even recognize him. She thinks he's the gardener. Seeing Jesus doesn't make a change yet. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And who is it you're looking for? <coughs> she thinks it's a gardener. And she asks, Where is the body? Where have they, Where are you taking his body? I want to anoint him. Where is he? She still doesn't recognize Jesus. All of a sudden, Jesus calls her by name. I want you to know several things that are going on right here. First of all, she is the very first person to see Jesus alive. The very first. And the second thing, Jesus knows her by name, and she knows that voice when her name is called. And Jesus said, Mary, the minute she hears that voice, she knows that it's Jesus. She knows that it's him that is alive. And she rushes to him and begins to hug him and hold him. Oh, she was so thrilled. And the Lord said, no, don't, don't cling to me. My mission's not done. I want you to go tell the disciples. I want you to do this. After a time with Jesus... She goes to the disciples, and as she goes in there, she's all excited. Can you imagine the joy she's going with? The liveliness of her step. She goes to G into the disciples, and she gets there, and she says, He's alive! I have seen him. <coughs> and the disciples, they didn't believe. They did not believe her. Later on, two of them would be walking on the road to Emmaus, and see Jesus. Later he would appear, appear to the disciples except for Thomas, and later he would appear with Thomas there. But at this point, they did not believe. Mary had seen, but they did not believe. Notice when Jesus told her to go, when he told her to go to them, he called those disciples his brothers. It is amazing that when you see the Lord, there should be a change in your life. When Mary met Jesus, there was a change in her life. There was a change from whatever the bondage she had into the liberty. There was such a change. She was now free, free in Jesus Christ. And the, the scripture says that the person who is forgiven much loves much. And she loved Jesus with all of her heart. Oh, that we would love Jesus. You know, Easter made a difference for her. She went from bondage to freedom. Not only in her freedom did she see an obligation there, 
but an obligation to spread the gospel. She did everything she could to help Jesus spread the good news of the gospel. She traveled with him. She supported him with her finances. She became a minister, as it were, a minister of the gospel. But all of that ended at a place called Mount Calvary. There she stood, helpless and seemingly hopeless, watching the one who had set her free be brutalized and murdered and killed on a cross, listening to his voice. And with his death ended all of her dreams, all of her hopes, everything was gone. The cross seemingly ended everything. We know that the cross settled everything. It didn't end everything. It ended Satan's rule. It settled the sin debt, but it was just the beginning. A preacher once was preaching and his sermon was, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. <laughs> it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. Friday, that good Friday that we celebrate, Jesus on the cross, was a terrible, terrible day for Mary. Her hopes, her dreams, her future seemingly ended on that day. All she had now were memories. And this bereaved Mary goes with others to the tomb. As she arrives at the tomb, she's confronted with an angels. Sometimes we don't believe the word just because we're told it. You know, if we could, Jesus told Thomas, you're blessed if you can believe without having to see. Mary did not believe because she did not see the Lord. The angel said he's risen, but that wasn't enough for her. And she wanted to find the body. She wanted to do what she could. Running into Jesus, when she confronted Jesus, when they were face to face, it made the change. That Easter became a turning point in her life. It became the high point in her life. It became the most important day of her life because Jesus was alive and everything he had promised, everything he had accomplished was now, as the scripture says about the word of God, forever settled in heaven. She knew that there was a savior, there was a risen savior who was alive and would minister and bring life to the whole world. A restored and renewed Mary was now in relationship again with Jesus Christ. As we celebrate this Easter, what does Easter mean to you? You know, we celebrate with meals. We celebrate with family. We get all the ornaments out and decorate. But see, Easter isn't about us. Easter is about Jesus Christ. It's about who he is and what he did on the cross for us and that he is alive now. And because he is alive, he's ready to work on our behalf and do everything we need. Oh, if we would only have a relationship with him. If you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, this is your day, this is your hour to ask Jesus to come into your heart and forgive you of your sins and make things right between you and him. He died and rose so you could have eternal life. Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, we thank you for the word that's gone forward. We thank you for your love for us that you loved us so much you'd go to that cross. But Lord, we even thank you more that you rose from the dead so we could have life eternal and we could live with you forever. We pray now of those that are shut in their homes because of the epidemic we're experiencing, that you'll bless them. Lord, that you'll encourage them. Let them know you're still the Lord and Savior. You're still the healer. You're still victorious. You're still on the throne. And we love you, Lord. We love you so much. We ask your blessing upon it now, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. As we've ended this teaching, we want to remember the highs and lows of what the disciples and Mary Magdalene had to go through. There was the joy of the entrance into Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday, to be followed by that Friday, with what they saw as a tragic end of their hopes. 
But yet, Christ rose again, and he gave a brand new hope for us all, and that we get to be with him. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you today, Lord Jesus, that we get to celebrate once again the glory of your resurrection. You demonstrated your loving power and your might, and knowing, Lord, that he was the first fruit, the one that fell asleep and rose again in triumph over the grave. At this time, Lord Jesus, and in these circumstances that we are in, we know, Lord Jesus, that we can look to you with a full hope, knowing, Lord, that you provide. You take care of us, and you provide a surpassing joy. We want to abide in you continually. I pray this for the whole congregation, for all those that are seeking you in Jesus' name. Amen. A few announcements. Let's not forget that it is Pray at Home on Wednesday nights, and that also, if you wish to send your tithe in, please do so, do so to the church mailbox, the P.O. box. If you need to pray, please call or text. And if you'd be so kind, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.